Hello friends, uh, my name is Waylon Lewis with Elephant Journal and I'm excited to be here today with Pride Pads. So, uh, Ajume, Prince Ajume, Wingo, yes. Yes. and you're a prince from Cameroon. No, from so Already messing up. <laughs> yeah, so I'm wildly ignorant, so hopefully you can uh, learn along with me. And then Mary, who's related to THE Shackleton, very exciting to me. Right. Um, and you're on the board or a co-founder? Both. Okay, mm -hmm. look at me. And then Stephanie? Yep. Yeah, I got something right so far. Good job. Of Wallaroo, the amazing hats, and also a founder and on the board? Yep. All right. So tell me, what is Pride Pads? Any of you. And then we'll go into the story of how, it's, how it started. So Pride Pads, do you want me to take that? Yes. Pride Pads is an organization whose mission it is to provide sanitary pads for girls so they can stay in school. Without <clears throat> sanitary pads, they have uh, greater access to being sex trafficked, being married as a child, having children as children, not finishing their education. Mm. So most of the time, the barrier for them to complete their education is having menstrual um, supplies. Right. So we titled this something like the one small thing that is the difference between empowering girls and women, education versus not, and on the other side, sex trafficking, all kinds of even not being empowered in, or in their marriage if right. they don't have an education. It's amazing that one little thing could be that difference. Right. So how did this come about, Ajume? Well, it came about about a decade and five years ago when I was uh, traveling from uh, the city of Douala uh, to my uh, kingdom of Nso in the northwest region of Cameroon. And I was in a bus, <clears throat> a uh, public bus, and on the way, the bus suddenly came to a stop in an unusual location. <clears throat> and then a bunch of uh, women, including a young girl, they walk quietly out of the bus uh, to a nearby, under a nearby tree. <clears throat> and uh, curious as I was, I came out to find out what was uh, going on. And in the middle, surrounded by <clears throat> these women, was a young girl of about 11 or 12. I didn't ask the age, but she was very young. And what I heard was uh, this, were these women taunting at her, how dare you do this? Uh, what, you heard, you, what you heard them talking about? Yes, uh -huh. yes. Don't you have a mother? Weren't you advised to stay in one place? Why are you traveling? You are a disgrace to women wow. around the world. And so I was trying to figure out what was going on. <clears throat> and among them were some reverend sisters who were there also. Some what? I'm sorry. Reverend sisters. Uh -huh. Religious. So, uh -huh. Yeah. So I came to figure out what was happening. And what was happening was that the girl started menstruating mm -hmm. for the first time in her life. And when I looked through the girl, was as confused as everybody that was surrounding her. She was confused? She was very confused. She, didn't, she, didn't, she seemed to me, and that was my own observation, as if she didn't know what was going on. Right. She herself was worried about what was going on in her body. Because it's a bit of a taboo. They don't talk about... Yes, that, and, uh, and I believe that's why they came out and stood under a tree away from the bus and away from the view of everybody else. So when I figure, figure this out, because I was traveling with a paper towel and a, and a toilet roll paper, I went into the car, pulled out of my suitcase this uh, paper towel, mm -hmm. came and uh, gave it to her, and I asked her to clean herself, and I unwrapped the toilet uh, roll paper and gave it to her. And at that moment, the women that were surrounding her, they stood and they looked at me, and they were all uh, puzzled. And they asked me, who are you? You know, where are you coming from? Where are you going? One of them even said, you might be Jesus Christ. Yes, I said, no, I'm not Jesus <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, they were thankful. Yeah, they were very thankful. Uh -huh. And so I went where she was sitting and cleaned uh, the place with, the, with, the, with, the, one of the, with a paper towel. And uh, so, and I can see her face beam mm. 
I can see her recover herself. And uh, after a while, people, they all walk back into the bus. And at that moment, I thought about my own sisters. I thought about all the girls that I knew. And I said to myself, never again. I'll never allow this to happen to any girl. Mm -hmm. Anyway, not just in my home, anyway. And that Anywhere. was, yes, yeah. that was the birth of... Uh, of uh, of pride parts, yeah. you know, at that moment, what we came to call pride parts. So yeah. I came out and I tried to figure out how to make sanitary part mm. and what to do and didn't know what to do. Yeah. And so that's how it came about. Yeah, to me, the very simple thing that's so inspiring there is all of us are bothered by things we run into every day. Yes. And we don't do anything. We just get a little frustrated or irritated or negative or we give up hope like around climate change mm -hmm. and you ran into something and instead of that could have been a momentary thing you gave her a paper towel or toilet paper and then you went on your way but you actually now have devoted years of your life to it I, I exactly I yeah. exactly and and i said to myself uh as as i walk into the bus and sat down and i started reflecting and it seems like i was in in touch with my ancestors mm -hmm. and I said you know this is something that should be done by women everywhere mm -hmm. and that all the women across the world whether you are black or white mm -hmm. or whatever color mm -hmm. you know whatever sexual orientation this should be something that this should be something that women can do for women mm -hmm. and so I, spear, I spearheaded this and that's how the journey started oh. And, it's, and in that moment, with a circle of women, it went from embarrassed or kind of condemning the girl or it being a taboo or no education around it to them all being grateful and happy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And imagine for exactly. a young, well, exactly. I, I'm imagining. But I think for all of us, whether it's Pride Pads we get inspired about, and we'll talk more about Pride Pads, mm -hmm. or just in your own life, if we start contributing when you see a problem mm -hmm. and you turn that into an opportunity to... To make it better yes because i came from the reason why i could do this and the reason why i could come out when i saw the women uh, uh streaming out of the bus is because i i because i come from a matrilinear society mm. my matriarchal matrilinear yeah my kingdom was founded by my matrilineal ancestor yeah and so my sensitivity to women is unusual. Mm. You know, I, when I look at women, I saw something different from what mm -hmm. many people around the world, what they see. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, and I think that was uh, one reason why I could do There were many women, uh, there were many men in the bus, and I don't think that any one of them knew what was going on or right. could figure out what was going on. Right. Yeah, because in a patriarchal society, yeah. You don't. Yes. You just ignore it, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. So then, how did you two and uh, others get involved? How did this become something more? Did you live here at that time? I wasn't living in in uh, Boulder at that time. I was I was in uh, I was in Boston, uh -huh. and so uh, then I started uh, trying to figure out how to make sentry pass because I thought it was something that one could make easily. Mm. So I bought a machine, tried to figure it out, and uh, went around collecting sanitary parts from around the world to opening it up and try to see how one can do this. Because I look around, I didn't see anywhere where this was being made. And when I went to, when I visited uh, the factory in Lebanon and many places, they were gigantic factories. And I didn't know how one can easy, how one could easily do this. So I was looking for something that was doable, mm -hmm. something that can be done at the human scale, not at the scale that I saw. And there, <laughs> yeah. on site. Yeah, and on site. And that's one yeah. of the most exciting things yeah. about Pride Pad is this: you're not just buying sanitary pads from yeah. some big company that are plastic that are. You know, you're just dropping them there and leaving. Yes. How are how is Pride Pads going to work? Yeah, and and so from there I learned a lot about sanitary pads. I right. learned I learned that they were made of gel, 
and I, I, as we, as we experimented with this, with my brother in who is in Ghana, we, we put water on it and we started seeing the reaction. Water on what? On on the sanitary part. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, I see. Right. We see we saw the reaction and we came to realize that it was made of gel and that these were not biodegradable or, right. or, or compostable. And so the goal was to make something that was biodegradable, something that was in line with the world today and looking to the future. And that's how we came out with the idea that we could do this from from banana or plantain stems. And actually this, I got the information from talking to old women in my home who said that they used to, they would take the banana stem, they would rub it until it created a fiber and that it has health uh, benefits on mm -hmm. it. And that's how we embark upon this journey. And the idea was to do everything so that we, it can be biodegradable, made in local environments and uh, by women and for women. Right. So that's the other magic to this is it can be made on site, it can create jobs and empowerment, yes, the women yes. could make it together, have a center and you now have a center that's starting? Yeah, we have a facility in northern Cameroon now where we're about to begin production starting at the beginning of January. So we so exciting. Yeah. So exciting. We went to India. Jume and I went to India with my daughter last November to go and look at a machine because we wanted to see if we could find a machine that would be able to create a certain amount of pads that we could distribute into these local communities and we ended up purchasing the machine which has now just arrived in Cameroon and has just been transferred. It's there now? It's there it's now. now. Wow. As of two or three yeah. weeks ago. That's an just, exciting moment. Yeah, yeah. Just, just got transported by train up to our facility and it's being moved into the facility tomorrow and then the training will start. So, so just to, to restate everything, you're 11, you're 12, 13, you're a, a girl you go through, um, you know, you start getting bloody with your school uniform. It's a taboo. You have to leave school often. Yes. It's right. shameful, maybe. Yes. Sex trafficking happens yes. early teen pregnancy, pregnancy. or marriage. Or yes. Right. You leave school so you're not even empowered, even right. if your relationship is good. Yes. In terms and, of education. And, and it's across. In Ghana, where my brother, uh, our friend, and so do being law is, is exactly the same, yeah. all across. Africa. And this one yeah. thing, a sanitary pad, mm -hmm. yes. can keep them in school, Absolutely. keep them safe and empowered. Then when they get married or in a relationship, they have education, they have mm -hmm. understanding yeah. of economics, they can be an yes. entrepreneur. It's also led to their self-development, mm -hmm. right. because their self-development is more or less, you know, frozen on the way. Mm -hmm. You know, you need your eyes to see, you need your mind to reason, you need your mm -hmm. perception. Yeah. To do this, and when you have, when you have uh, young women that stop in primary school because of something so little, yeah. something that is doable, yeah. something where, as they say, little goes a long way. Mm. I think this is where the problem is, mm. you know. And they end up in uh, marriage early, or they drop out of school, or they then this reinforce Patrick. Because say uh, women are the patriarchy. Not, yeah, yeah, patriarchy reinforced that. Yeah. Say women are not capable. They are so you know, they are low energy. So if people are inspired by this, if readers, elephant readers or viewers are inspired, they can go to pridepads.org and you can give twenty four what is it, twenty four dollars mm -hmm. a month? Or a one time? Yeah, you could do a recurring amount, a recurring donation every month if you wanted to do that. Yeah. Twelve dollars a year will supply one girl with sanitary pads for the entire year. Twelve dollars a year. Yeah. Will supply so, one girl. It's like two Starbucks yeah. coffees. I mean, you know. Glass of wine. Twelve dollars. <laughs> yeah. Twelve dollars a year will supply pride pads. One, one girl, girl with a, with pads for a whole for year to one year. And, and wow. twenty four dollars will give them an entire high school. Twenty-four dollars. We'll give them two years. Two years. Two years, which right. is the high school. Oh, I see. Their term yeah. in high school. Yeah. So um, I can't see the comments, but if there are comments, if there are questions, if you want to say where in the world you're tuning in from, that's always fun. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to say, if you are giving twelve dollars or twenty-four dollars, I think it's a fantastic, positive way of um, 
feeling good about life and contributing in a very easy way. You guys are doing the hard work for us here. Yeah. So um, $12 is for a year. Yep. I know I've said exactly. that three times, but that blows my mind. I know, it's um, amazing. I also want to say it's... it's um, I want to just say that I, we, I have given, mm -hmm. um, but I, I really I want to just say we all should give to that. Yeah. Um, so please, if you do feel inspired, go to pridepads.org. Is it right? Easy? Easy. It's easy. Right on the website. Yeah. The this is me on the website. Button. Yeah. The donate button. Okay. Right. Donate button. Right. And it's twelve dollars or twenty four or whatever you want. Or a Recurring thousand. one time, a thousand. Five thousand. Yeah. Five thousand <laughs> is fine. We are We're trying to buy right. another machine. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it makes a real a big difference. Place, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and also, you know, I mean, someone who can give a good amount of money will allow us to build a women's center, girls yeah. and women's center. And that blows me away too. Yeah. They can make them right in the women's center. They yeah. can hang yes. out with each other. Yes. Yeah, so it'll become a community And, and we, we, they can have like uh, solar phone chargers there so oh, yeah. girls can come in and charge their phones. They can right. have... Uh, so they can uh, be on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Have, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. They have com computers using solar power. Wow. You know, so this also help in the overall idea a problem that we are facing today so we want to be moving you know a mile ahead of even the western world yeah <laughs> yeah we want the western world to copy yeah this right. we have much to learn we do right? but for them to have a place for the women and girls to have a place together as women and girls together without the men around, I would think would be super needed and empowering. Yeah. And yeah. the education component is huge. That's a big part of what we're really trying to incorporate with this mission, because without education, they don't have the opportunity to go on to become lawyers or doctors or right. teachers, and they can empower other people. And it's amazing what we take for granted in the United States, that we have access to sanitary pads. Right. In, in middle school and high school, our children are given curriculums that include menstrual hygiene education. So our kids have some idea right. as they grow up what to expect. Yeah. But when we marry and it's and not I, considered shameful. No, it's not. And there's it's kind of exciting and yeah. maybe it's like it's a little hard to deal language. with, but it's and last yeah, year right passage, mm -hmm. exactly. last year when we were in Ghana, uh, we took a trip there with our teenage daughters and mm -hmm. we had groups, we went to schools with two to three hundred students and we were surprised at the end of every time we did a presentation, boys would come up and say yeah. to us, how come I don't have a period? How come I don't menstruate? Yeah. How come I can't get pregnant? Wow. And so the lack of awareness wow. and education for boys and girls alike, you know, around, it's not just in Africa. I mean, it's around the world in developing countries. And we are just very fortunate in the United States that we have access to that education. So it's important to us yeah. to provide this and give this messaging out also in other places so that people have access to the same kinds of things that you know, people in the United States have access to and to yeah. create opportunities for these young women. And as Ajume said, it's really, it's about holding hands for the women around the world to hold hands, whether we are black or white or, you know, whatever color, whatever nationality, that women should be really trying to empower other women around the world. That's really a big part of what we're trying to do. Yeah. It's time for women to rise up and really become you know, a force to be dealt with. Yeah, what's well, the Michelle Obama um, quote? Right, right, yeah. exactly. Right. No so women, yeah, no women yeah. can, yeah, no society can ever really function if they don't um, empower, empower the women. Right. Yeah. And, and it should be about men. I mean, everybody, uh, everybody living today, it doesn't matter where you are, went through the, a woman's womb. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not a secret. Right. That's what it is. And uh, I think that this is uh, very important. As I said, if Africa is ever going to move forward, if Africa is ever going to lead the world, it will be thanks to women, and that's what we're trying to bring this new generation of women that will show the world, mm. that will bring something new, bring newness to the world, you know, that will yeah. bring miracles. Yeah, to the world. and we need it. We yes. men need it. Yes strong, empowered women so that we can stop being this weird, you know, we're, the patriarchy isn't healthy for men. Yeah, and, and I know this. As I said, one, the founder of my, of my, the creator, I don't want to say the founder, because we make things happen. Mm. You know, whatever happens or doesn't happen depends upon what we do and we don't do. Mm. You know, I will never That's blame sad. nature because of the, because girls are not, being empowered or because they lack sanitary parts, it is us. And uh, I know that women can do this because 
the founder and the creator of my kingdom is a woman. I mean, that's what it is. I, I mean, I'm still coming around the world to see where a woman will come out and found or create, you know, a nation. And then, uh, for those who don't know, Pride Paths is how, how old? We just really, we're a nascent organization. Yeah. We really came to um, be organized in the last year. We yeah. just received our 501c3 certification. Like a few days ago. Yes, or we, just, yeah. we just so got it. So this is brand new. It is. Like any yeah. gift is really going to help it get it off is. the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't, if you can't give, just sharing the story, getting the word out mm -hmm. is super helpful. Just being inspired by it is helpful. I, feel, I think following along too, because I think we're going to document the journey of watching mm. girls actually uh -huh. complete their education, see mm. what they go on to do, right. see what the women in the community do with this opportunity for their own economic uh -huh. benefit. And there's this amazing ripple effect, you know, some of the girls that we met already, you know, they're talking with their, you know, schoolmates and things about the opportunity of having a sanitary pad and realizing the chance to stay in school and to continue getting educated and to be able to have a voice in their own future which right. I think is hugely, you know, that shifts the dynamic in huge ways. Mm -hmm. And it's a ripple effect, as I said. So, you know, it's one girl will tell another girl will tell another girl, and eventually it creates this whole paradigm shift, which I think is so beautiful. And there's yeah. so much opportunity to empower people and empower women around the world, and particularly mm -hmm. with this project in Cameroon. And mm -hmm. it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. And to dispel the stigma. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the very stigma. And, and I think I want to see the day that a young boy will go and buy a sanctuary pass for her sister. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I want to see this. Whether it is in Nepal or it is somewhere in South America, I think I, w I want to live to see that time. Mm -hmm. And again, as I say, this depends upon what we do and don't do. We are not going to look, point our finger somewhere. It is us here. Mm -hmm. It is uh, people who are listening to this, who are yeah. partaking in this, that uh, who are basically responsible for creating this kind, this new paradigm, mm -hmm. as uh, Stephanie uh, put it. And it's interesting, I, we were just in Cameroon a couple of weeks ago, uh, we visited the facility where we're going to have these pads being made. And it felt, before that moment, sort of esoteric, you know, it's sort of like this theoretical thing, you're thinking about what it's going to actually be like. And we arrived and there were ten women there who have been hired by our ground operations manager, Derek Gerlite, who is from Boulder and he's moved yeah. to Africa to run the project for the us. The red-haired guy. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. he's a yeah. red-haired guy in Africa, he doesn't Derek. stick out at all. Not at all. But he, but he had asked all these women to show up and they, I introduced myself to each one of the women and you know, got a chance to look them in the eye. We went inside, we sat down in a big circle. And in that moment, it was so profoundly emotional because I realized these women recognize a huge ec economic opportunity for them to change their lives. They'll get a salary. They'll be responsible for making pads that will be distributed to younger African women. And I just felt you know, that this, really, this movement is hugely important. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, for my daughter, for Mary's daughters, for women and girls all around the world, this work really matters. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's hard to negate when you're sitting across the room from somebody who is there and realizing that their livelihood is going to be impacted forever by the opportunity to make these pads and to be able to give them out in their community. And we intentionally have started this project in northern Cameroon, which is a very sort of, I guess, more isolated area in Cameroon. And some of the women there said, thank you so much for bringing the project to this, to Ongandere. This is a place where no projects ever normally start. Everything always starts in the capital city. It always starts in the south. But this is a very remote region, and it's really important to them. And it's mm. going to make a huge difference. And so we... Now, for me, that was also really empowering and very impressive. Uh, l let me add that even in Cameroon, my personal assistant, Maxel, called me to say that young men want to donate mm. yeah. money. Wow. How can they donate money? I mean, I wow. think he, he's... Yeah, that's right. He said, yeah. how, how should they donate? They go to the website, they don't see where to donate, should they send them, or how should they send money? I'm talking about people, I mean, we will assume that they don't have 
they have nothing compared right. to, I mean, the richest films here will be one of the, the poorest films will be one of the richest mm. people, people there. They have nothing. They are eager to donate. Wow. Yeah. Because they appreciate. Yeah, because they yeah. appreciate it. They, they understand what this means. It is changing. You know, them. they they you know they have sisters, some of them they have daughters, and they know what this yeah. means. So they are asking. This is in Cameroon. We are not we are not talking about in United States or in Europe or anywhere. Yeah, and I think Mary had actually you've mentioned several times about the the change if girls get educated right. for climate change. You can right. maybe speak to that a little bit. Sixth way to combat climate change. So, which is of particular interest to me, worried about climate change, keeping girls in school because they're going to be solution providers. Uh -huh. They're going to be contributing to how we fix the problem. Right. So giving yeah. them that education, the opportunity to stay in school means that they will then right. be aligned with these, you know, more bright paths in their future to right. sort of create this Yeah, it affects change. everything. It does, yeah. Right. Because like we're, we're all yeah. connected, right? All around the world. We're not. Yeah. Right. If we're isolated and right. ignorant and <clears throat> taboos and fear and yes, we say we say we say that uh, we always say that your neighbor's problem has arrived. Yours are on the way. Uh, I mean, if you so saw what? That, your neighbor's problem, your, 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 neighbor, your neighbor's problem has arrived. Yours are on the way. Uh -huh. Yours are yeah, on the way. Yours oh, are on I the see, way. I see. You <laughs> know, if you solve your neighbor's problem, right? You know, you solve your own problem. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do it. Mm. That's beautiful. We need more of that here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so one of the most inspiring things to me about this and a couple other nonprofits I've been a fan of over the years is, which is very rare is that, and we've already touched on it several times, but I want to underline it, that um, you're not, again, you know, doing a flyover solution where you drop some sanitary pads right. made by some, you know, corporation. You're, again, creating jobs. They're made locally. Right. They're completely compostable, they're, so there's not some sort of side effect of plastic trash everywhere. Right. They're 100% compostable. Yeah, right. Right. that's a big part. Yeah, that's a big part. And the education and the yeah. detabooifying yeah. around the blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's right. a big part of this for us. Was biodegradable, compostable yeah. to make yeah. sure it's yeah earth friendly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ajume was you know sort of yes. I think a pioneer in this idea of trying to create the byproduct of plantain and banana fiber. Yeah. And having women in villages actually in the project in Ghana where in they're Ghana. actually yeah. yeah they're taking that banana yes. they're making it into fiber and then they sell it to um, his brother's organization, and they use that as part of the material in their actual pads. Mm. We're, we're hoping to do that in Cameroon as well, somewhere down the line. We don't have that part of this set up mm. quite yet, but mm. that is our eventual goal. Yeah, I mean, we get, we get the money to, to change the banana uh, stems into fiber. Mm -hmm. I think this will make a big difference. Even, I will even imagine us if we do it right, and we are able to raise enough money to get the machines, I imagine us selling it here, selling yeah. it back here mm. in the United States, because that is as friendly. Yeah. It is biodegradable. Even the even even the wrapping that it's we have better than what we have here. Yes, yeah. it's fine. It could become a one for one right. yes. company yes. where you buy pipes here. Right. Absolutely. If you're a woman or you know, if you're giving us a gift, Absolutely. and then, um, you know, it provides one for someone. Yes, and, and that you create uh, a multiplier effect. Right. There, and even a multiplier effect here, mm. you know, because you do that, you're employing women over right. there as well, you know, because the more, mm, by the more women are employed, and the more this, the change goes mm -hmm. across, I put it, you know, changing the paradigm for me. This should be a kind of uh, revolution yeah. around the way we do things. Yeah. You know, for us to begin to see our life as one. Mm -hmm. You know, to see ourselves as uh, uh, as um, uh, as see our uh, to see the trees, to see the land, to see the water. You know, to see ourselves as transcending to what we see around us. You know, and 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 those things as transcending to us as well. If we begin to see the world that way, then we will begin to. See. You look at a tree, you look at the water, 
you will see something different from what you normally see. Right. You will not see it always as a means to an end. Exactly. You what know, can you I can, get? Yeah, you mm -hmm. can see yeah. it as an end in itself. Yeah. And, and I we think need the, that. Yeah. Like you mm -hmm. talked about climate change, we need yeah, that yeah. so urgently. Yeah, right yeah. yeah, because when you look at uh, what it takes to cut a tree, in, right. in my, it's like a kola nut tree from where I come from, you have to talk to the kola nut tree to do this. Kola nut. Kola nut. Kola nut. Kola nut. Kola nut. And, and, uh, and the idea is that, different. you know, mm -hmm. all these things they transcend into us uh -huh. and we transcend into our right. environment. Right. So in that way, our environment and us is one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, there is no further argument to be had. Yeah. You know, when you think about the what the environment means, even now you look at it aesthetically, right. it's, it's still amount to the same thing. It's still and separate. Yes. Yeah. We don't want it to be separate. We don't want it to be something out there. Right. And also yeah, one you want to transcend to see this you transcend this, you yeah. see this as us transcending into yeah. environment and environment transcending into us. If we yeah. look at this we can begin to see where the idea of biodegradable central path yeah. is. Yeah. And I love what you said, just to follow up on that, just we're really trying to be sustainable. So starting this project with a very small footprint, but making sure that we're doing it correctly. So environmentally, we're doing it correctly, that we're supporting people in a particular region. Mm -hmm. And then as the project grows, really being able to expand sort of organically yeah. and just evolve it so that we can start taking it into other places around yeah. the globe. And there are a lot of people doing this work right now, which is mm -hmm. really important. Around sanitary pads. Around sanitary pads. Yeah, it's yes. happening in India, a lot of places in oh, India, people yeah. are really taking this on actually the documentary called period end of sentence won the best documentary at the academy awards in 2019 wow. uh, last march and that's a phenomenal video if people haven't cool. seen it they should watch that yeah. it's a very we should put a link in the yeah, yeah. 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 it's a period very end of sentence period yeah. end of sentence yeah. yeah and it's a very similar project to what we're doing but the idea that you know we're trying to sort of as I said earlier, empower girls and women is mm -hmm. a huge undertaking and should not be taken lightly. Mm -hmm. yes. Something and, that's, and, yeah. Yeah, and in patriarchal uh, systems, you know, this is very hard. It's an uphill journey, you know, for... To make this happen? Yes, because, you know, the world is, is much more uh, uh, embedded in, in this patriarchal mm -hmm. uh, right. nature so that when something you do, something about girls and women, you should understand that it's going to be very difficult. You need, mm -hmm. you need, uh, you need the audacity, mm -hmm. the resistance, the persistence, mm -hmm. you know, the equanimity mm -hmm. yeah. to do this. Because, you know, as I said, a decade and five years ago, you know, this has been going on. And, and, and without that audacity, you stop on the way. But right. as I said, I will not stop. Right. You know, we have to go on. You know, we have to go on, yeah. no matter and what. And those people that are sitting out there that think that, you know, this is something that is needed, you know, mm -hmm. should join hand. And we go on to this, we go on with this until the day that it becomes the normal aspect right. of life around the world. I'm not staying just here in Nepal, right. you know, in Brazil, in India, yeah. in India in, uh, you know, among the aboriginals, yeah. you know, so that's, that's the goal of this. And as I said, women should hold hands first, you know, and then men, and it doesn't matter whether they are white or black, this has nothing to do with with the race, it has nothing to do. It is about women. Right. It is about women ac uh, across the world. And as, yeah, and as we like to remember, 50% of the population is female, which is a huge statistic. So 50% of the people around the world are menstruating or you know have right. menstruated at some point in their life. And it is a natural occurrence that we should all just be grateful for instead of having these you know stigmas and taboos right. against it and i think it's that you know it is a, as a jimmy said it's a huge culture shift right because you're trying to change the way that cultures have been for thousands of years decades yeah. hundreds of years in different places around the world 
And so it takes a lot of, as you said, audacity to really be able to stick with it and recognize you're going to come up across people. We went to villages last summer where people were very much the village elders. You have to call the village elders into the center of the village with all of the villagers. And you have to explain what you're doing and you have to have a translator and you have to be very sensitive to these cultural, you know, sort of the ways that things have been for many years and trying to explain because you also don't want to create a dynamic that's going to negatively impact the important work that you're trying to do. So you have to be very sensitive to that as well. When you're, you have to listen a lot. You have to listen, yes. you have to understand the, the reason behind the way things are and then slowly, slowly try to change that dynamic you know, right. by giving them the opportunity to see that women will be better off if they have more you know, ability to do things if they are more educated. And there's a shift that's that good has for to, everyone. Right. Yeah. But there's a shift that has to take place because there's a lot of fear that right. comes from trying to change a dynamic that's been right. a certain way for a long time, even though it's a natural phenomenon. Yeah. You well, know, it's one of the things that we learned was that it varies from village to village mm -hmm. what their fears and beliefs are around menstruation. But one of the prominent ones was if you talk about menstruation it encourages promiscuity. Mm -hmm. So they don't Dads don't want to talk about it. Moms don't want to mm -hmm. talk about it. Much like we feel about talking it's just about fear sex around here. sex. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you talk about your period, then they're yeah. going to be encouraged to be promiscuous, which is yeah. the opposite. It's yeah. truly the opposite. Um, which also brings you birth yeah. control, I guess. Big, it's a whole big, big part of this. Yeah, a big, big part of, of it. And, and that's why I say to those who are in this journey that they should expect resistance. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Expect resistance, even from women. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, because everything is working how Even it's working. Even for women, yeah, because, yeah. you know, what do you do? You find yourself embedded in the patriarchal system, you become an accomplice one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, how do we get people out of this? Mm -hmm. And to do this, as I said, we should always expect resistance. I think that's the first thing. Well, so also their trust. They have to... Yeah. Each village, yeah. each community, each right. woman, each girl, time. each man has to trust yeah. you that it'll still be yeah. available. Yeah. It's exactly. not just a one week. Exactly. But the good news is that uh, there is the 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 reception that we've had mm -hmm. is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wow! I mean, this is the good news. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you talk to men; they want to line up behind. At one point, I talked to the former prime minister of Cameroon, and he said he would like to be an ambassador for this. Mm -hmm. And I talked to, we went uh, at some point in Ghana with the African, we go to villages, we talked to chiefs and uh, I mean I used my, uh, use my position to be able to talk to these chiefs and they easily realize what was in plain sight. Right. Right. And they all say, we stand behind you. Mm -hmm. Even we went and met the Lamedu of Ngaounde, the, the, Lame, the Lamedu is the, the king, the king okay. of, the, of the area because you go, that's the first place where we went. The Lamedu was so excited oh. and he said, this is wonderful. Oh. And then I, we met with the governor of the, of the region. The governor was just, uh, I mean, no one that we've seen. You know, in spite of the expectation, so it's good news. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. I want to take this good news across. Yeah. yeah. So this is just the beginning of this Correct. huge journey. If you're thinking worldwide, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Often we looked at each other and thought, "Oh my, we what have to, have we gotten into? We have to quit our jobs. We're going to quit our jobs, retire, and move to Africa. Move to Africa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah, beware. I, yeah. I, I would like Beware to point out, started. yeah, and it's, it is interesting, some of the things we've learned along the way as we've been doing this um, in the United States, I just want to point out, because I think this is really fascinating, that uh, sanitary products are not provided in prisons for, for prisoners, for female prisoners. Only four states have recognized the basic civil rights for women to have sanitary products in prison, and so prisoners across the United States actually have to buy sanitary pads or tampons when they're in prison. And the problem with that is 
a lot of them don't have money, right. so they can't buy those sanitary products. So I would also uh, encourage people to really get behind that kind of movement in the United States right. to try to help women here at home make sure that they have access to sanitary Do you pads. see any hands being raised out there I do, in the I audience? See, I do. Anybody going to take that on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's a big Volunteers. It's, it's a big it's a big project but, but frankly, awareness you know, awareness, is, awareness. Yes. awareness yeah. is huge and to think that we live in the United States of America in 2019 and women are not given sanitary pads in US prisons is shocking. Yeah. I mean I really found that that was really a hard fact for me to swallow since we're doing this important work and and not to be indelicate but if you don't have sanitary pads yeah then you bleed on your uniform and right. then you get chastised by the guards and then right. it creates other you know horrible you can get things unsanitary because yeah. you're using I mean, right. exactly. I mean, and that's such a good question and i think the indelicacy yeah. of that is yeah. important yeah. because i think yeah. that's what keeps everything so quiet is right. people well, don't want to ask those questions yeah. and i think we and i think we need to put some pressure also in the united states on our own government and legislature you know to legislators to try to create that positive change mm -hmm. yeah. i mean that's I, simple i i, I would even go as far as to say that they should have it in schools Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In schools for free. Yeah. Well, we have problems yeah. here in Boulder, yeah. Colorado. We should have it in schools. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's this I'm, is I'm not saying in the United States. Financially, they don't have yeah. access. Yeah. Because they're not offered for free in schools. Right. Correct. Exactly. Wow. So there are a lot of organizations also that are providing, yeah. um, you know, sanitary pads and tampons to yeah. girls around and the United States. And birth control, States. like condoms yeah. and all yeah. that. Yeah. But these are these are important things to talk about, and as yeah. you said, it's it's good. Let's not sweep it under the rug. No. Let's get it out there and have the start. No, these because the result is so happy if Huge. you go the right, right way. It's right. so awful. Yeah. I remember right. being at a restaurant. We were at a restaurant speaking with a potential investor, and we had all of the sample pads on the restaurant table, and the waiter kept coming over, and he was so embarrassed. And we're like, oh, just get used to it. And the, the guy that we were speaking to huh. had three daughters, and he said, I guess I better get used to talking about these things. Yeah, it's good. It's just again, Aww. it's shifting the. The paradigm. Yeah, we right. just have to make it incremental changes slowly and getting to a place where everybody is comfortable talking about it and where we're making changes that go across the globe and impact everybody. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's big, very big, important work. Yeah. So we're proud to be uh, right. proud to be spirits. Yeah. yeah. Well, something we start from Africa back here now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's the best. <laughs> um, so and then when you moved to Boulder at some point, how did you all connect? So Mary and I actually know each other through mutual friends here in Boulder. And then we met at Jume through another mutual friend of ours because he's a professor at CU and mm. somebody that we know in the yoga community. At the University of Colorado. And yes, yeah. he teaches philosophy. Well, you can speak yeah, to that. But, yeah. but I have a, um, <laughs> we have a mutual yoga friend here in Boulder who said, I have this friend from Cameroon who's working on this really important project. I have this prince friend. I have, she she did actually say that. <laughs> and then she said, uh, you have a teenage daughter. Would you like right. to be involved in this project? And so we went and met with a junior. That's kind of an unfair way to say it. You can't say no at that point. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, well, we met teenage him. daughter, would you like to uh, exactly. hear about other exactly. teenagers? Right. Well, and our, both of our daughters actually have really embraced this project oh, yeah. and, yes. and taken yeah. it on. And they're both on our board yeah. of advisors. And they've wow. both been to Ghana cool. and Cameroon. And yeah. so it's exciting. It's, yeah. a, it's a great project. And we, I but think. So how did, oh, so then you just met up and so you... we met and Ajume told us about his project and what he was doing and Mary and I are kind of go-getters and so we thought well she's got a naturopathic product and I've got a hat company and we have a lot of free time not not, <laughs> not so right. so we thought what can we do in our free time right I, yeah. I don't know if anybody's read the book Half the Sky. It's about yeah. sex trafficking around the world. I read that book when my kids were all, I have three children, they were all very little, mm -hmm. but it impacted me so deeply mm -hmm. and I was like, I have yeah. to do something. The, the point of this book is that girls are having, children are having children and it's too tough for their pelvic inlet and so they actually have permanent damage as a yeah. result. Long story short, I thought I gotta, I gotta figure out how to sew up a fistula in Africa. I, th oh that's gosh. how much I was moved by this book, and I thought, okay, that's not very practical. But then this <laughs> came along, and I was like, okay, this yeah. is my perfect way to give back in the same, you know, maybe in the same way. Yeah, as I said to them, you do this not because you have time, but because you don't have the time. Right. You give not because you have, but because you don't have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when the gift right. of time oh, and material means something. Well, right. it also yeah. feels effortless on some level. You know, uh -huh. It feels really? like it, it has been a lot of work, but, <laughs> but there's a momentum. I mean, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Shackleton, yeah. Hardy. This is easy. This yeah. isn't going to the North We're Pole. Gonna exactly. Everybody's going to keep their business. She said that's that what I keep day. saying. It's going to no, I'm the, it's going to be fine. That's my favorite yeah. line. She's like, "Is that right?" I'm like, "It's going to be fine." Is that right? <laughs> no, but it's true when you love something. I always say like I learned this lesson late in life, but when people say, oh, "I'm too busy." I'm always like, I translate that in my head. I'm like, they don't Want care. To do it. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. They could begin to care or not. Yeah. But like, I'm too busy for everything. And if right. I care about something, I... Right. Make time. Yeah, it just happens. Right, exactly. Even if it's stressful and hard, right. it doesn't mean it's easy, but... And I think sometimes, yeah, the most important things that we do in life are difficult. Nobody ever did anything because it was easy, right? right? You never accomplish anything. I do lots of things because they're easy, but... Yeah, but they, do they, are they meaningful? No, not at all. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. You're so, right. yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, yes, question? So some people would like to know if there's a hands-on way they can work with your organization more than just donating money. They yes. Hands-on. Well, they can donate money. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but could they, they go could. on a trip or volunteer? Yes. Or? And that, yeah. And that's one of the things we're hoping to implement in the future is we're going to try to take groups of hopefully teenage girls. Yeah to Cameroon to meet and, and maybe and boys. And yeah, boys, boys. And boys actually it's yeah. interesting yeah. I think uh, I think initially I think initially it would just be girls yeah, right. actually and other organizations that we've partnered with really just do it for girls primarily because it's about this female empowerment right. so but we would like to take trips with girls over to Africa and have them go and talk in the schools and do presentations and do menstrual hygiene education. Right. But aside from that, we would love to have... Because it's easier to hear it from a fellow teenager. Exactly. Yeah. To say, yeah. to say sure. the experience. Like I went through, I had my period yeah. two years ago. Yeah, like, 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 how, like yeah, kids, they did. They, they all they do that. is they say, this is what happened. Yeah. When I had my fifth menstruation, right, and, and it was, yeah. and, and they was probably think that teenager is cool, so they're like, "Oh, it's okay it to talk about." Yeah. It. Yeah. And right. I think what was interesting was that the place that the African children came from was this fear where they were really talking about it was they were scared to get their period, they didn't want to get it, they didn't know what the future looked like, and our daughter stood up and said, "I couldn't wait to get my period. I was so excited about like when my period was going to start. Yeah. All my friends were getting their period. Yeah. It was like something. Where's to, mine? Come right? on. It was something to yeah. celebrate." Yeah. Yeah, and, and well, it rejoice is. about, and so that's also what it's a rite of passage, exactly. Like said. Yeah, right, it's mm -hmm. a big deal. So, and we would like to have people, you know, help work with our organization or mm -hmm. comments you know, on Instagram. Anybody yeah. wants to try to contribute um, their time, copywriting, helping us with our website, oh, things like that. So these we are have, good ways. Yeah, we have yeah. a lot of. We have a need, and you can send an email to pridepads at gmail dot com. Okay. And we will be happy. We've got some great people who work yeah. on our with our organization who can respond and can help, kind of let people know what you can do to help support I, us. I think also, you know, to share this uh, interview oh, yeah. if you've watched it with somebody that you know that might be. Um, as interested as you are to, you know, this is how things grow organically and that's yeah. what we're really interested and, in. And the first time when, uh, when, we, when we started this here, the first person to, to stand up and do this was uh, one of our employees, mm -hmm. Derek. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, this, this is a man. Yeah. You know, he just finished from CU. Mm. And like a joke, he took off and went. In Ghana, <laughs> there was Hannah you know, who was my uh, former student who heard about it and decided that she was going to go over there. So, so there are many ways right. uh, to, uh, to be a part of this. Mm. And people are inspired, I think, yeah, by this yeah. project and yes. by this work. We don't ever go into a room <coughs> and talk to people and not like, yeah. everybody yeah. wants to participate yeah. or donate. How can, yeah, how can I help? How can mm -hmm. I be involved? And yeah. that's inspiring. I think that keeps us motivated and inspired yeah. also. Mm -hmm. Well, it feels good. I mean, as I'm a writer, so the story of like going from shame and obviously sex trafficking, all these awful things mm -hmm. to just so simply with one little Hover. hub right. that is the exactly. compostable sanitary pad that they're making, creating jobs and community mm -hmm. to empowerment and education and... Right. You know, good relationships and it's feeling hope. okay about their sexuality. and mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's safe, yeah. And like you said with the Michelle Obama quote, then transforming all of society and climate change. And, yeah. So, thank you so much. Very grateful. Is there anything I haven't touched on or other uh, comments on Instagram or There's one Facebook? There's comment about uh, menstrual cups mm -hmm. and why not use those. Yeah. Such a good question. Yeah. 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 Sure. Oh, you can. Go ahead. Well, we thought, Ajume thought the very same thing, so he bought all of the, 
the Diva Cups in Boulder County and took them back to Africa with him. Did you really? You bought all of them? You could find I, this I, man owns I, more Diva I, Cups I, I, than I, I any a, man I in the world. I have Diva Cups. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, point, the point about the Diva Cup is, you know, when you look at it, you think, wow, this is a solution. Yeah, because right. it's like yeah. permanent. Yeah. Talk just, about yeah. gas, no waste. Face, whatever. Yeah, first, people don't like the idea of touching blood. I mean, the, the point is this. We want to. We don't want to create people that don't exist, mm -hmm. and start solving. You want to deal with them. We want to at. deal with yeah. the people that we have, and the yeah. people that we have are people that don't want to mess around with blood. There's a lot of to, uh, yeah. yes, taboo around, taboos around it, and in fact, uh, people associate uh, collecting this blood with uh, witchcraft. Yeah, and there was a young woman in uh, who, uh, in good faith. Thought this was a wonderful idea, and she was accused a of witchcraft. Yeah, of collecting mm -hmm. uh, blood. Yeah, and I think that that's the reason. And this it goes same. It goes also with uh, reusable. Uh, one that's where we started, but uh, the problem here is uh, there are quite a few of them. The first one being that one <clears throat> you. You provide re reusable sanitary pads. It means you have to wash them, yeah. and it's, you still have to deal with the blood. Two, uh, if you wash them, you have to dry them. And in rainy season, if it doesn't dry, you create an infection. Right. Trying to solve it gets mold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean the, the 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 problem, you know, that you get from solve you create problem from trying to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You know, the, you know, these are some of the reason why we're going with uh, with with uh, this biodegradable. So they're single uh, use. They are yeah, single yeah. use, okay. yeah. 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 And why not? And I would just like to say that it is such an honor for us to work with Ajume because he is inspirational in his sort of leadership in the way that he recognizes and acknowledges and appreciates women, as he said, coming yeah. from a matriarchal queendom. His respect for women universally and the way that he sees the world is so refreshing. Yeah, and it's really and everyone us. could be like you, or yeah. all boys could become like you if we have a more balanced society. Yeah, instead of this Role patriarchal models. thing. Yeah, yeah. and so no, I felt that I went to your fundraiser and I, um, <laughs> that was a very inspiring guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. we should yeah. Yeah. we should we should always strive to be better. We should. As we nation should. at all times. Yeah, you know, and, and it's the say, that, best that, way that, if you're feeling that. hopeless, yes, which yeah. we all are yeah. these days yeah. sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Life long in the devil. Yeah. 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 Well, thank yeah. you. Do. And thank you so much for, for having me. Yeah, yeah. it's thank an honor. For, yeah, when I learned about it, I was, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a natural fit uh, for this um, show. So hopefully all of you enjoyed this, and please share, and please give, and please get involved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.